Hello there, it's Lucas Arita from Lisa Productions here, and I am really stressed. I just recorded this tutorial, but I forgot to uh, like turn the microphone on, so it's really, really sad. Huh, okay. <laughs> Back to my mood. Um, yeah, so today I'm gonna do I'm gonna be doing a a weather tutorial kind of or temperature tutorial kind of changing temperature. Uh, so I'll just show you a picture to demonstrate what I'm talking about. So maybe I have like this really cool shot of myself in my room. And no, I'm not from Kansas uh, with a jacket and a hat that I can turn it into something like it's winter and it's snowing. Now I know it makes no sense at all that it's snowing on my room, but this was just for uh, demonstration purposes. So yeah, and as you are already thinking, this uh, you can get rid of a lot of limitations from locations and uh, seasons, because I mean it can be a hot summer day and you can pretend to be in uh, winter with this, or vice versa, like it's a winter day and you can pretend it's summer, unless there's snow and stuff. Yeah. So yeah, let's just jump into the tutorial. Oh yeah, I'm sorry uh, that I haven't been uploading videos lately, but I've been really busy, uh, busy, and I mean I've been working on some tutorials like hologram. Kamehameha typography. Uh, I've been working on other projects like this intro that I have to do. And I also uh, recently got Xcode. For those of you who don't know what Xcode is, it's a coding program. So I'm learning a little bit of coding and it's really fun. And I encourage you guys to learn it. I mean, we all use apps and technology and we don't even know how to read it, like read the actual program. It's really cool. I mean, I'm building my own app here, the yes or no app. It's pretty easy. I mean, you just type a question, and I mean, I'll show you guys. Let's run it. Oh, I have a problem. I forgot about it. About that. Yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to. I'm not going to tell you guys the problem, but the problem by basically you just write a question here, uh, click answer, and it's gonna say yes or no. Yeah, I'm working on that, and yeah, let's just jump into the tutorial. So let's open After Effects, and also I'm gonna take my clip that I'm gonna use for this. It's right here. So once that opens, wow, it's taking so long. Okay, yay. Let's track this here, and close this. So let's create a composition by dragging this right here. Here we have a composition. Let's pretend it's cold. Okay, let's leave it here. I'm gonna leave it there. So now, uh, this is pretty easy, like mostly two steps for winter, for like the cool effect. It's mostly color grading. No, not color correction. Most people say color correction. Color correction is, Okay, I'll make another video to explain that. Uh, you want to color grade this and change the color to a bluish color because that represents heat. I mean, heat. Bleh. That represents uh, like cool winter. And of course, orange, red represents heat and summer. Uh, just like painting and drawing. So what you want to do is click on this. Oh yeah, and the second step is adding snow if you want to, that's optional. Uh, so you click, click on your clip that I'm just going to change the name to clip for some reason. Click enter to change the name. Click the clip, go to effect, color correction, curves. I know it says color correction, but this is color grading, okay? Now you want to make the shape of kind of, of an S. Really faint S. Like that, and you can see the change by clicking this. Kind of from that flat image, it pulls more of the colors, as you can see. Now, what you want to do is I'm going to use a uh, plugin for After Effects that I really recommend you guys to get because it's really good. Because if you don't have this uh, plugin, you're going to have to be working a lot with curves and like. Oh, sorry curves and 
levels and a bunch of other uh, effects to create a good shot a good color grade shot but if you have magic bullet man you're gonna save some time you just click edit a window it's gonna pop up it's basically kind of like another program uh, you just move your mouse to the side to the left and you have all this already uh, made uh, preset uh, uh, looks I guess I mean yeah and like cool you can see here warm zombies you have tons of you have different category categories and stuff so yeah cinematic basic I mean just a basic one of course and if you think yours doesn't look good I mean it depends on how well you shot you have to shoot a really flat image for this uh, I'll do a tutorial on how to get a flat image you can mostly do that just on DSLRs or cameras that have a lot of settings so yeah let's add the cool effect and as you can see here it turned into a bluish color now you can mess with this a little bit uh, like change the curves or a little bit let's say I wanted a darker blue or something now I'm gonna do it like that because I think that one looks really good but I mean you can change it to your liking now what you want to do is click finish as you can see it changed colors now you can turn this off to the difference there uh, now the second step I mean if you just wanted that I mean you don't want snow that's all you have to do you can add some uh, maybe smoke effects when you breathe to show like your uh, your breath but that's it if you're if you don't want snow and if you want snow you click the clip you go to effect simulation snowfall now you can see tiny part particles have been created here but they're too small so let's bump it all the way to 15 that's the maximum There you go. Now you can see they're a lot bigger. Now let's make there are too many. Let's make about four thousand. Yeah, that's better. And now what you want to do is duplicate the effect. Command D for Mac. Duplicate it and change the scene depth. Do this. So it will add a little bit of randomness to the size and blur of the particles so it looks more kind of more realistic yeah and finally the last thing you might want to do that I'm not going to show you guys right now I'm going to leave it like that it's doing some rotoscoping which is a bulk up word that you should learn if you want to keep doing post production and editing rotoscoping is basically cutting something like let's say I'm gonna use the uh, pencil to rotoscope this. Well, sorry. Don't forget to click on your clip first. Uh, so I'm gonna rot rotoscope this really fast just to demonstrate you guys. Uh, there. Now, why would I do something like this? Well. You can duplicate this, call this one person, and this one background, and delete the mask on this one. And now, some of the particles are going to be behind me, and going behind me, like if there was some type of depth which is really really cool and will make it look a lot better now as, as you can tell uh, I'm gonna be moving and the rotos and you're gonna have to either animate it frame by frame the mask which really you don't want to do or you can use the rotor brush 
that's I recommend you using the rotor brush. And well, that's m almost everything for today. Uh, like I said, I will be doing some tutorials soon. I've been really busy, so I'm sorry for that. But yeah, I I might also start doing maybe some Xcode tutorials. Who knows? So yeah, the, uh, this is Lucas Rita from the Les Productions, and this was the tutorial. Bye.